would invite um, immediately our last speaker, so uh, from uh, uh, Coding the Curves, which is Iskandar Tang. I hope I pronounced not that bad uh, your name. So, co founder of Coding yeah. the Curves, so focusing on intelligent access and implementation case in the in Kronike. So, uh, Iskandar, the floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you very much uh, for opening the floor. Uh, let me see, this is a new program for me. Let's see if I can share my screen with you. You see my presentation now. Can I have a thumbs up? Yeah. In your phone? Yes, yes, thank we you. Can. Great. Um, thank you, Paulus, and thank you, Alice, for uh, inviting me to, uh, to explain a bit about uh, our solution and about uh, what we do with Coding the Curbs. Uh, Michael, I think. I also need to thank you because you already set the scene a bit for the topic that uh, that we're uh, working on. Um, because I'm Iskandar, I'm one of the founders of Code in the Curbs, and we're a startup from Amsterdam in curbside management. And I want to tell you a bit about the story, how it actually started. So three years ago, uh, we started with this dream, um, a dream where the city space is livable and more multifunctional, so that the same space could have different functions throughout the day and throughout the week. So, for example, uh, in the morning, it could be a place for unloading goods or parking of vehicles. Uh, maybe you can make temporary uh, um, temporary shared mobility hubs in the afternoon or in the weekends when it's sunny, uh, like in Barcelona last week, uh, you can also use the same space for recreation. So the basic idea is that we need to go from monofunctional space to multifunctional space. Because what we see happening in cities around the globe, and I don't really need to explain this to you, but I think the the photo already uh, says more than a thousand words. So we see old city centers, it's very busy. They're often designed and built in the, in, the, in the medieval times and definitely not meant for the amount of vehicles and people that are passing through the city centers right now. Um, and what is actually happening in cities around the globe is that it's, it's, it's mainly a battle for space. And I know that I see some familiar names and some familiar cities here uh, in this meeting um, and I know you're working on zero emission zones, but zero emission zones don't solve this problem, right? Because whether a vehicle is diesel powered or electricity powered, you still have this battle space going on. And that's the real problem because it's dangerous for people passing through. It's very stressful for the drivers. And if we look at the statistics, there are quite a lot of uh, accidents uh, happening in city centers because of this unsafe unloading. Um, so that's basically what we do with Code in the Curves. We think, okay, we have an unloading bay, we digitize it, we call that a smart zone, and we offer a software platform to users to book that space. So for example, this driver can use our software platform to make a reservation upfront to del deliver his goods in a safe and efficient way. So uh, these smart zones uh, are mainly used now for logistics. So we have smart zones in Groningen, in Riga and Bucharest, and one in Rotterdam at the test site. Um, we brought it into practice where logistics can easily uh, use our platform to, uh, to make a reservation and to use the space. Uh, but at the same time, we also make sure that other people can use it, like uh, residents, they can park their vehicle there, or um, uh, other users like uh, bicycle parking. So what does our solution consist of? So we have a very easy to use a web-based app so nobody needs to download anything you can just directly go to smartphonebooker.com and you can start using the app today um, it's very easy to use it's free to sign up uh, but at the location itself at the smart zone we also have a, a smart sign it's a, a state-of-the-art e-ink display it shows what the function is of the smart zone for example it could say it's unloading and the license plates are also displayed there. So everybody knows, okay, who's allowed to stand there at what moment and when it's free. There's also a QR code and the QR code directly um, uh, links you to uh, our app. So you can sign in when you arrive at the location. You've also seen it just now in a video and I hope it, it also showed well, but you see these lines in the, in the, in the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the floor on the asphalt. And we do this on purpose because we want to show to everybody that these are unique locations. They are multifunctional, you can book them, you can reserve them. Okay, everybody knows, okay, this is a smart zone, this is something unique, this is a dynamic or an adaptive uh, city space. And I also heard um, uh, Michael mention that you need enforcement, and we also believe that. Uh, we, uh, we integrate uh, with enforcement companies, for example, in the Netherlands, we're the only co uh, company in the Netherlands who was able to, who was able to 
uh, enforce at uh, unloading base. So in that way, we we offer not only uh, a benefit for the logistics, you have your own space, but also we have enforcement to make sure that uh, people behave in the right way. Um, I already touched upon all the different uses that you can do with the smart zone, but I just wanted to show you some photos of what we did last week. Last week we opened uh, also an electricity point at one of the locations in, uh, in Groningen. Um, and this is meant for Horeca, uh, Horeca uh, logistics. They normally uh, let the engine run, the diesel engine, to make sure that the reefer and the cooling system is intact. But now we also offer them an electricity point so they can easily plug in the vehicle without causing any uh, uh, nuisance to the neighborhood. They can plug it in and they can keep the refrigerator running while they use the smart zone. And that's, of course, uh, you need a booking system behind it in order to make sure that they are able to use it. So that's what we do in Groningen. Um, but I also want to show you a bit on the on the yeah, larger vision, so where it's heading in the future. And um, what we believe is that um, what we see happening already in a lot of cities is that where the old city walls used to be, um, they are becoming a sort of digital walls, right? So you as a city are determining, okay, who's allowed to enter the city, under what conditions, when, how often, and you're actually controlling it already. Well, Groningen is quite far on this already. They have AMPR cameras around the old city walls, right? So the old canals and all the entry roads are being, um, are being controlled. So only in the afternoon, when you buy an exemption through the waiver systems, you can enter the city. But what we're looking with them is also that, okay, in the afternoon, when you have a, a, um, a reservation through our platform, you can also enter the city. And then you can safely park at one of these locations without causing any nuisance. So uh, that's quite a big thing. Um, and I think this is, uh, this is something that will happen in a lot of, uh, lot of cities in the future. Um, and that's why I also put this slide on for you, because we started in 2020 with this idea of adaptive space, right? And now we're really focusing on first on, okay, can we improve the logistics in cities around the globe? And actually, since this year, we also uh, got a, uh, funded by the Dutch government to really start working on this intelligent access idea. So we're now working with Helmond, with the city of Helmond, and also with uh, some other companies that work with uh, Uvar systems, and I also heard earlier ESA systems. So we're also trying to combine everything. So from the location that you have, the reservation, to the journey to it, that's the ESA system. And then you have the Uvar system when you enter the city. So we're trying to make that holistic approach uh, possible. And we're starting with that in Groningen and with Helmond. Um, but of course, we haven't forgot about, you know, the idea that we had in 2020 about adaptive city space. And that's also something we do. So uh, this is an example that I really like from Utrecht, uh, where we did our first uh, first smart zone last year, um, where we, in, on a Friday afternoon, we used the same space for sort of a mini festival for residents to really enjoy the city space. And especially the, the image on the right is something that, uh, that we like to see, uh, giving space back to the people when it's, uh, when it's possible. Um, and yeah, my call out to you is uh, we're looking for more cities currently to join us uh, on this adventure and, uh, and journey uh, and to make uh, city space uh, more livable and user focused. Thank you very much. Um, my email is here on the top uh, and I hope to talk to some of you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Iskander, for your very detailed presentation of what code in the curbs and how also it's, it's expanding in the Netherlands and it's also, I would underline this holistic approach that you mentioned in your, one of your last slides that is also covering several aspects.